Hey, what is up, guys? And welcome back to the FSS Football Channel. And today we are back with another match preview for Manchester United versus Norwich City in the Premier League. Now, before we get into this match preview, of course, we will be doing a watch long for this game. Kickoff is at half five on Saturday, meaning we will start the stream at five. Well, of course, we'll bring you what the, the, the starting eleven. Have a little discussion about the game beforehand, and obviously, then we'll watch the match. Anyway, enough said, let's get into the preview. Now, where do Manchester United currently sit in the Premier League table? Now, after a couple of decent results after Ralph Franknick's appointment, or really since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked, Manchester United sit in sixth place, having picked up seven points from our last 15. Norwich, while they sit bottom of the Premier League, in on, of course, 20th, they do actually come into this game in better form than we do, having picked up eight points from their last 15. However, Manchester United do come into this game off the back of a 1-0 win over Crystal Palace. Of course, Fred scoring that wonderful, wonderful goal from the edge of the box, while Norwich got smashed in their last game 3-0 by um, Antonio Conte's Spurs team with Lucas Moura equally scoring a banger. So it was a real week of Brazilian stars scoring goals. But let's talk about the Crystal Palace game a little bit more because of course while we did win 1-0, I think that first and opening half an hour was absolutely unbelievable and it, it shows the way that Ralph Ragnick wants to have this team playing. Pr high press and vertical passing. It was fairly direct, a lot more direct, a lot higher tempo than we're used to. Cutting passing lanes. It was fantastic. And that was after one training session with these players. We're just going to see it develop more and more and more. While we weren't amazing against young boys in the Champions League, if you look at that team we played, it's not a huge surprise at that. But coming back into this game, I'm fully expecting us to see more like we did in that opening half hour against Crystal Palace. But hopefully we can be even better and it, we can last it and make it last longer. Because obviously, like I said, that, that was only the opening half hour, really, before we saw kind of a more standard Manchester United performance, which we're used to under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Michael Carrick. If we can see more of that half an hour, we can tear and we can, yeah, we can tear this Norwich team apart. And that is a dangerous proposition because we do have absolutely world-class players that can make any team pay for any slight mistake. But moving on to team news, Norwich City have a couple players out. Brandon Williams, of course, cannot play. Obviously, he's been a starter at left-back since Dean Smith took over at um, Norwich City. However, due to, obviously, him only being out on loan there, he can't play against his parent club, meaning he is not eligible for this game. While both Rashina and um, Zimmerman are both out for Norwich. However, on a bright news that Todd Cantwell will be back for Norwich, so he will most likely start for the Canaries this week. For Manchester United, Rafa Varane and Edison Cavani were all, well, were both in training. They didn't make the squad for the Young Boys game, but if, again, if you look at that squad, it was very young. It was young players and kind of just a, a throwaway game. So we don't know whether they are match fit to play. I'm going to assume that they are for, the, for when I go into starting lineups. But of course, if they're not, then I will give alternatives when we get there. Anthony Martial and Juan Basaka both had knee injuries. Uh, Martial, we, we commented on it against, or well, in the Young Boys preview, but he has got a knee injury that he, well, it's kind of a niggle from what he already had. If, by the sounds of it, he was forced back a little bit too early and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which was weak. Which we kind of saw and expected because that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did continuously with players like Marcus Rashford and Victor Lindelof. So we're, we're not sure if Martial will be back. I'm going to assume not. And Aaron Wan-Bissaka was stretched off at the end of the game against Young Boys. Um, so he will be out. That He out picked up a, I think he picked up a hand or wrist injury and a knee injury. So he will be out for this game. With all that being said, let's get into what I believe Ralph Radnick will play in this game. And I'm going to go, obviously, David De Gea and go. I didn't think Dean Henderson blew me away against Young Boys. He was mad, weren't he? Average. David De Gea's been fantastic. David De Gea will keep his place in the Premier League, and rightly so. Dallow comes in at right back. Wambasak is injured. Dallow's 
been in pretty good form since the arrival of Ralph Ragnick, so he keeps his place naturally. Harry Maguire and Rafael Varane will play centre-back. If um, Varane isn't uh, available, Lindelof will, of course, come in. I think we kind of know that for a fact, considering Bailly played against young boys, Varane, um, Lindelof and Maguire all didn't. Matic played centre-back alongside Bailly, so I would, you'd, you'd imagine if if um, Bailly played in that game and we played a centre-back in Mat Matic at centre-back, it would be to kind of protect Lindelof, Maguire and Varane. So if Varane's not back, Lindelof will play. Tellers at the left back, I think Luke Shaw did all right. He didn't make last a full 90 against young boys. So I don't imagine he'll start today as well. Tellers have been in pretty good form since Luke Shaw got that injury against, I want to say, Watford. In that double pivot, I'm going to go for McTominay and Fred. Fred's been fantastic since um, Ralph Franklin has been appointed. And again, really, since Oli Gunnar Solskjaer did get sacked. And obviously, he's just he's played alongside McTominay pretty much his whole United career, really. I don't see that changing McTominay. He offers that height and presence in midfield, which Fred doesn't. So I think Ralph Franklin likes the two, um, similarly to what we saw from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Michael Carrick. However... I could see at some point maybe McTominay coming out of that team. Or we see McTominay really step up his game and his levels, which is what we're kind of hoping he does. Because there's nothing better than someone who cares for the club, will give his all, playing and being good enough and coming through the academy. That's what McTominay is. At the moment, he's not good enough, but he will give his all. If we can become that player that is good enough, there's no one better to be in that team for me. In the wide positions, I don't really know what how to describe them. Kind of the three 10 roles. I'm going to go for Sancho and Bruno Fernandes. Fantastic against Crystal Palace. I expect them to play. And then up top, Cristiano Ronaldo will definitely start. And then it's just who will go up top. I have a funny feeling he might go with Greenwood in this game. He was, he was talking about Mason Greenwood after the Young Boys game. Scored a fantastic goal. I don't think Rashford's playing great at the moment. So I I think Greenwood might get the look in. Moving on to my team. This is the team I've gone for. So De Gea keeps his place in goal. Again, it's the same back four as Ralph Ragnick's. How, however, again, if Varane can't play, Lindelof comes in. I've then gone for Donny van der Beek and um, Fred. I think Donny can do the role of McTominay. Yes, he doesn't offer as much of an aerial presence as Scott McTominay. But I do think... He is still physical. At six foot, he's not small at all, really. I think he can do the role of McTominay, but he's a much better passer and can progress the team forward a lot better. So I will go with Donny van der Beek and Fred. Again, it's the same um, wide tens as in Ralph Ragnick's team with Bruno Fernandes and Jadon Sancho. And then up top, I've gone for Cristiano Ronaldo. And if Edison Cavani is fit and available to play, I would play him. I think them two, when we played Spurs, they worked absolutely fantastically together. I want to see more of it because they are two fantastic, fantastic strikers who playing together at their best will score goals and will be a threat for any team. Now, just going into this game. Now, look, we've got to win it, don't we? I mean, Norwich, while they've been much better since Dean Smith has taken over, of course, um, replacing Daniel Fark. He's not a miracle worker. Norwich aren't still a, aren't amazing any still. They are bad, very bad, really. They will get relegated, you'd imagine. They're missing uh, Rashina, who is a fantastic player, one of their better players. I just don't see how we don't win this game, to be honest. We've got to win it. Spurs battered them, and I think we're going to batter them, really. F comfortable. 3-0 Manchester United win. Now, if you did enjoy this match preview, please do hit that like button below and subscribe if you are new and you haven't already. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, please do tune in for more watch along. Like I said at the beginning, the details are on my side. Kickoff is at half five, meaning the stream will start at five. So be there or be square. Anyway, like I said, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one in a bit. Peace. <laughs>